welcome back to Talking Dragon Age, the show where I talk about Dragon Age. Today we're looking at a quite subtle background mystery in the Dragon Age universe. I love this kind of thing. INR. Or THE INR. You may remember hearing it mentioned in the Magi origin in Dragon Age Origins. Take her to INR. The... the Mage's prison? No. Please, no. Not there. No! Prison is not the best word for it. It's more like Arkham Asylum. I mean, not quite, but... INR is an isolated fortress. Back when the Deventer Imperium ruled most of the world, both INR and Ostagar were places where the mages would perform weird experiments, and I'll get into that later. Now, Ostagar had another purpose in that it was to watch for and defend against invasions by the Chastened Wilders. Now, the wording of the Codex entry for INR is a little confusing. It starts by specifically referencing Ferelden, and that Tevinter had these two locations for magical experiments. It says they were both at the ends of the Imperial Highway, with Ostagar being at the south and INR being at the north. But it specifically refers to Ferelden here, not the whole world. But Ferelden doesn't really even have an extreme north end for the Imperial Highway. The closest it has are the intersections at Denerim and the Lake Kalanhad Ducks, or the pass that goes past the entrance to Orzammar. Now, you might think the Codex entry refers to the actual extreme north end of the highway, but those two are in Minrathus and Paravantium, two major to Vinter cities. The southern Chantry Templars control Ionar and they wouldn't be able to do that up into Vinter. The only other end is at Andoral's Reach, and... well, that's where Andoral's Reach is, so INR surely isn't there as well. For those who don't know, Andoral's Reach is another old Deventer fortress now in ruins, and it was where the mages took refuge when the rebellion was beginning. The Codex entry says the exact location of INR is only known to a handful of Templars. This leads me to the theory that the section of the Imperial Highway that might have led to INR was completely destroyed or deconstructed or something to keep its location a secret. A cover-up is exactly the sort of thing the Templars would do for a location like this. I do believe it's in Ferelden, but I could be wrong. Its exact location... Uh, well, modern roads have to lead to West Hill, High Ever, and Amaranthine but we can see by the Storm Coast that it could be pretty easy to hide a fortress in these mountainous regions back here, especially if it's underground or something. There's also an area up here that doesn't really have anything, so they could be hiding there. It's worth noting that ancient Deventer believed that the waters of Lake Kalanhad were blessed by Razakale, which is why they built the tower in the lake. It's possible that INR is actually underneath Lake Kalanhad, Maybe it even connects to the deep roads. Bottom line is, we aren't sure exactly where it is. I'm going with the theory that it's somewhere in northern Ferelden, and the stretch of the Imperial Highway that once connected to it was covered up. Though Tevinter probably has old maps of the Imperial Highway that still show where it is. That could be useful for something I'll talk about later. I want to talk about what it is they do there. So, the people that get sent to INR are those strongly suspected of being possessed, or are particularly at risk. So they send them to INR as a sort of test. A trial by fire, if you will. I think it's best to just let Lily herself tell you what it's like. I am Lily, myself, alone. There is no one in the cell except me. And I am myself. I write these words each day. At INR. It is wise to remind yourself of these things, especially now. The last inmate the Templars brought was a boy, wearing velvet with one sleeve torn off. A noble from Hercynia, the whisper ran, suspected to be an apostate hidden by his family while he practiced blood magic on their servants. The Templars locked him in a cell. He ranted and cursed at them, but the rest of us grew quiet, waiting. Ionar is a prison designed to let things in. The veil here is so perilously thin that even I can feel it. The denizens of the Fane gather like monstrous shapes pressing against a fine curtain. 
And if you are a Maleficar or an apostate, you are a beacon to them, ripe for possession. Thus, the Templars bring those here who are accused, but whose true nature cannot be proven. Ionar is the final, terrible test. Within a few days, we all heard it from the boy's cell. That horrid, gobbling shriek that never becomes familiar. The Templars were quick. Night Captain Bryn sees that they keep their swords as sharp as mercy. We exhaled again. It has been years now, studying and praying in my cell or walking the halls where Deventure Mages once did their experiments. New faces arrive, and I lie awake waiting to hear that shriek. Sometimes the Templars administer tests, as abominations can be cunning and patient. The tests leave their scars, but each time I pass, I am Lily still. The Templars designed the prison to test those suspected of possession. They throw them where the veil is extraordinarily thin, then essentially torture them to provoke a demon to reveal itself. They do this several times. In the case of Lily, over the course of ten years, from when she was taken at the beginning of Origins, all the way up until the beginning of the Mage Templar War. At the time this was written, she was holding on to her sanity and identity but it was a struggle. She has seen many new faces come and go over the years. She's no longer surprised by the things that happened there, but is still saddened by it. But then, something strange happened. I will speak to my superiors again, Night Captain Bryn told me. But something has changed. There have been no Chantry messengers in weeks, and the Templars' frowns deepen. The last messenger feared there might be open war between mages and the Templar Order. What does that mean for us? INR is an isolated fortress, a fine prize for any mage skilled in demonology, and the Templars might decide to purge this place for their own safety. With no new orders, Knight Captain Bryn must decide for himself what to do. He's a good man, but as INR teaches, sometimes being a good man means having a well honed blade. From a diary sent to seeker investigators, who later found INR deserted, with no signs of violence. Abandoned, with no signs of violence. If the Templars purged the place, the mages and or abominations would have fought back, knowing it was either that or die. No trace of the Templars or inmates, no signs of violence. So, maybe the Templars decided to just abandon the place and let all the inmates go. But I don't think they would do that, and even if they did, the, that, that would be simple enough to track. Maybe the Templars themselves fell victim to possession. We know Templars can be possessed, but that usually requires a mage to guide the demon in. Or, blood mages mind-controlled the Templars and forced them to let the prisoners go. Maybe it was a massive jailbreak. But then we have the issue of why there were no Templar bodies. Perhaps they were possessed due to the thin veil and literally walked out. Still, demons tend to lash out at the world once they get through. Even had they escaped, what happened to them? Were they eventually killed in the war? Are they still hiding? The lore often tells us that abominations like to destroy stuff. What about Lily? Would she not have gone back to her family, the Chantry, or even told the Seekers? There would have been traces of all this. It's like no single theory can completely explain everything. I freaking love this! If you guys have theories of your own, be sure to share them in the comments. The last thing I want to talk about is what INR was used for way back when Deventer was in control. It seems like it was primarily a place for magical research. The things they did there weakened the veil, but we don't know what made this location more unique than any of the other magical research facilities that Deventer had. For example, just in Ferelden, they also had Kinlock Hold and Ostagar. That's not even mentioning the others across Thetis. The Deventer Heartlands should have had many. What made INR different? Unfortunately, we don't know. All we know is that it weakened the Vale severely, more so than at Ostagar or even Kinlock Hold. 
The codex entry explains that it seems like they were looking for something specific. Whatever it was, it seems they never found it, but we don't know for certain. Andraste's armies sacked the place upon hearing news of her death. Though it was eerily silent, they killed the mages while they were in the Fade. A few things interest me about that. Did Andraste's armies intentionally attack while the mages were in the Fade? Why were so many of them in the Fade at the same time? And why did this place last so long? Why had it not been sacked before Andraste's death? If I were to guess, I'd say the mages of Ionar made some kind of deal to stay out of Andraste's way, and in return they could continue their research. Upon Andraste's death, her armies attacked in retribution, not caring that Ionar had nothing to do with it. Either that, or Ionar just didn't seem important enough to attack before this and the armies went after what they thought was an easy target for revenge. In any event, it's probable that Ionar kept the true depth of their work a secret. As to why they were all in the fate at once, it could be that they were completing whatever their end goal was, but we may never know for certain. Anyway, this attack left the building intact, but damaged the Vale even more. The Chantry Templars eventually moved in and made it a prison for suspected abominations. The things done there were inhumane. Even those who weren't possessed before likely became possessed while they were there. Even non-mages were in danger of that. In the Dragon Age, Lily describes Knight Captain Bryn as a good man. It seems he was convinced Lily wasn't possessed and was trying to get her released, after nearly a decade in that awful place. But the mages rebelled, and something forced everyone in Ionar to vanish without a trace. Even the Seekers of Truth, magical investigators, found nothing. And this leads me to what I want to see from Ionar in the future. Honestly, this would make a great book. But this is also a great setup for DLC. Like the Incident at Ionar, or the Mystery of Ionar, or the, the Something Conspiracy. Because the Ionar conspiracy doesn't pop, and it would have to be part of a larger conspiracy or something. Anyway, a DLC where you go through this place, this eerily silent prison. There would probably be some Fade stuff like in Warden's Keep, but I would keep that to a minimum to preserve the creepy feel. We could uncover what Tevinter was doing back in the day, and what happened to the Templars and inmates when they disappeared. We could see fade memories of both the Templars' harsh treatment and the cunning abominations. You know, show us both sides of it. The way Lily describes Knight Captain Bryn makes him sound like a decent man. So maybe he was objecting to some of the more inhumane tests on prisoners. There's just so much to explore here. I love it. Whether it be a book or a DLC, this is the kind of mystery that captivates me. So I think that's where I'll wrap this up. To recap... Deventer was doing something weird at Ionar, which I think was in Northern Ferelden, but I could be wrong. Whatever they did weakened the Vale to the point where even non-mages were at risk of possession, making the Vale there possibly the weakest in all of Thetis, and that's saying something, considering, you know, Minrathus, Kirkwall. The Templars used the prison for suspected abominations and was really a trial by fire. Lily was there for about ten years, and she held on to herself, which is truly commendable. Some of the things she writes about in this journal, particularly about Jowen, are just so beautiful and so sad. Poor girl didn't deserve this. I have more I'd like to say about Lily and Jowen, but as it relates to Ionar, I think that's about it. If you want to talk about this, or Lily and Jowen, you can join us over on Discord, where we talk a lot about Dragon Age. You'll also get to see some behind-the-scenes content of the projects I've got in development. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to comment and like, and remember, Tala Nadas.